My name is Sylvia Hebel, and we're here to interview James Stewart at Paul's Pantry about uh, some of the things that are going on as far as local food um, distribution. And this is... I'm Jill, <laughs> and this is James Stewart, who we're going to be interviewing. Um, so our first question is, what services do you provide here for people in need? Um, here at this site, we have a soup kitchen which provides a hot lunch on Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Fridays, noon to one, and also a food pantry that serves gro gives out groceries on Tuesdays and Thursdays from noon to two. How much of your produce is donated by local people? The produce, the majority of our produce is donated by local people. Oh. Um, to either businesses or personal donations. We do get a lot of other food that we purchase, but not so much the produce. So it's very important to get that help from the local community. Okay. Um, do, do you like getting the fresh produce donations? Absolutely, mm -hmm. yes. Um, the people love it. It's a way to give them some nutritious food. Um, as most people know, the junk food is actually cheaper to buy than nutritious food. You mentioned that like businesses donate stuff. Mm -hmm. um, do the large businesses in the area, like Walmart or uh, Marketplace, are they able to do that? Absolutely. Um, we are able to pick up um, breads from one of the bread companies here um, and milk. Mm -hmm. We are also a marketplace donates to us. We're very appreciative for that. And then there is a, on a national level, we get food through Walmart. Um, Walmart and Second Harvest at the national level got together to make sure any of the stuff that was going out of date or that couldn't be used came to local food pantries. So we're able to get a lot of that stuff directly here. That's wonderful. What products do you need at the most at certain times of the year, like spring, summer, fall, winter? Uh, we're pretty constant all year. We pretty much need the same things all year round because we are one of the largest pantries. So we try to have the whole variety all of the time. Um, some of the hardest things for us to get, one, fresh stuff, obviously. Mm -hmm. We always need to have soups, peanut butter. Um, we never thought we'd run out of some of these things. We've ne Until this last year, we had never run out of soup, and we had never run out of peanut butter. And we've had to purchase that stuff um, because the need has been so great, and those that have been able to contribute are now finding themselves receiving food instead of being able to donate now. Is there any, are there any programs that you do here to make people more sustainable other than just, you know, donate the food or are they referred to other programs to help them get, become more self-sufficient? Oh, absolutely. Um, we have different programs here. We have, a, first of all, a home visit committee that goes out and visits with people also mm -hmm. besides our pantry site. And they inform everybody that they go and see about different options, all the mm -hmm. things that are available in the county that can help them with food resources, all different kinds of resources, and we network with all the different agencies. Okay. Um, and in turn, that's come around so that people are more aware of us. And like now, okay. some of the things, like during the summer months, where they have community gardens and that, um, like down at Maranatha, their first fruits have come here. Oh. So besides people wanting to donate that, that their first groups that they give come directly here. Some of the farmers markets mm -hmm. um, on Saturdays, the extra food that they didn't sell that day will come here. Things like that. Oh, that's interesting. So the community is getting involved. The more that they know about it, they're willing to donate. It's just getting the word out there. Oh, the donations that you get, what are they the highest and the lowest when you give the most? The most is probably right now around coming up around the holidays because people are thinking about people who are hungry during Thanksgiving and Christmas coming up. Um, the lowest is really the uh, the summertime. Summer is good for the end of summer is good for the produce and things like that. But for the other stuff that we get, um, we do get some go some government help, um, some staples, but they only deliver on the months where there's school. So July, August, and even this year, they stretched it a month farther, September, we didn't get any of those donations. Mm -hmm. And that made our food run go way down, and that's where we ended up having to purchase some more food, you know, like the peanut butters and, and things that people yeah. needed for protein and that. Um, 
<laughs> how can a, st a college student help? Oh my goodness, uh, so many ways. Uh, one, we're always in need of volunteers here, of course, mm -hmm. you know, helping staff or helping people get their groceries out to their cars and things. Yeah, food drives. Um, yeah. Also, personal care products, believe it or not. I know you're here talking about sustainable food, mm -hmm. but people who are in poverty don't, are not allowed to get shampoos, deodorants, toothpaste, things like that on their food share cards. Mm -hmm. So if we can get those type of things donated here, then they can save their monies to get the proper food for nutrition because they don't have to spend that money on that stuff. Well, that's, that's good too. Um, how has the need for assistance increased dramatically? Or has it increased? It has increased dramatically. Um, with the economic downturn, as they're calling it, um, <laughs> Our, our numbers are way up, both in terms of the number of people coming for both the soup kitchen and for pantry. And because there's even less income coming into the households right now, we're giving out more food to the families that are coming in too. We've increased the amount that we're actually giving out. And we've been able to do that, especially with the partnership with um, Second Harvest and Walmart. That has helped tremendously. Well, thank you very much for speaking to us, Jane. Um, this is a, a wonderful uh, experience to, to understand, and I'm probably coming down to volunteer sometime. I don't know exactly. Thank you. Oh yes, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Thanks.